President Biden says it is time for Israel to change its approach in the war in Gaza or risk losing global support. Yeah, while Biden has consistently pledged unwavering U.S. support for Israel in the conflict, he said yesterday the, quote, indiscriminate bombing of Gazans is not sitting well with much of the world. Israel has said it only target, targets Hamas and tries to keep civilian casualties to a minimum. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu admitted that he and Biden have disagreements over the handling of the war, but he hopes the differences can be ironed out. Now, the remarks by both leaders are among the most public examples of a brewing rift between the two longtime allies. Now, the most publicly critical President Biden has been mm -hmm. so far uh, in all these weeks of conflict. Congressional correspondent Stephanie Liebring and joining us now from the Capitol with more on what President Biden said and why it matters at this critical point in the war. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Rob and Alex. Well, the president in his remarks yesterday made during a fundraiser earlier in the day Tuesday, um, really pushing for more precision in Israel's attacks on Hamas. The president said that he believes Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu understands where he's coming from, but President Biden's a little more worried about the other members of Netanyahu's coalition government. Let's take a look at exactly what President Biden said yesterday. He said Israel's security can rest on the United States. It has the European Union. It has Europe. It has most of the world supporting them. They're starting to lose that support by the indiscriminate bombing that takes place. Um, President Biden in his remarks went on to uh, warn Netanyahu against making the same mistakes that the U.S. made during World War II and after the 9-11 attacks. Now, that was not the only thing we heard from President Biden yesterday on this issue. He also commented on the Israel-Hamas war during his joint press conference with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. And Biden's remarks during that press conference were a little more measured. We're not quite as strong as during his fundraiser earlier in the day. But President Biden again stressed the need for Israel to protect and um, protect the innocent Palestinians who are getting caught up in this war. Take a listen. Look, um, it doesn't uh, lessen the responsibility going after Hamas to for innocent Palestinians and, and, uh, and Hamas. Uh, look, we, we have a responsibility to protect citizens and ensure they have access to humanitarian assistance. That's why I've worked so hard with our Arab friends as well as the Israelis to get humanitarian assistance into Israel. Now, Alex and Rob, as you mentioned, the concern around the world over the impact on innocent Palestinians is certainly growing, and we saw evidence of that yesterday in a vote taken at the United Nations. It was a non-binding vote wanting an immediate humanitarian ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. That vote, 153 to 10, just nine other countries joining Israel and voting against the call for that humanitarian ceasefire. Again, that's a non-binding vote from the United Nations, but gives a good picture of where uh, give, gives a good picture on where other countries stand on this issue and on the attacks that are happening on the ground. The White House is sending National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan over to Israel this week to discuss um, ways that they can end the major fighting and the strong fighting happening, but also stressing the U.S. position that Israel's goal should not be to reoccupy Gaza and that they really should be focused on trying to resume peace talks. Alex and Rob. All right, Congressional Correspondent Stephanie Liebergen, thank you.